Hey everybody, I'm Bacon Ninja, and welcome to Bacon Bits, where I rapid fire off some answers to some of the internet's most FPV drone related questions. Well, the common ones anyway. These are videos where I don't take very long, we just dig right in. And the thing we're going to dig into today are beta flight arming flags. And no, I'm not talking about giving firearms to flags, not even the marine kind, or, you know, pulling your arm off and putting it on a pole thus turning it into a flag. None of that. No, we're going to talk about the little things that pop up in your OSD when you go to arm your quad that don't let your quad arm or cause it for some other reason to not be able to fly. So we're going to run through the most common ones and I'm going to give you some of the most common scenarios for why they happen so you can know where to start troubleshooting. Let's dig on into these bits of bacon. And the first most common one I see is RPM filter. When you see this pop up on your OSD, it's kind of ambiguous. You may not understand what RPM filter means. Essentially, what it means is that your ESC, your speed controller, is not communicating the RPM of your motors effectively to the flight controller. And in newer versions of Betaflight, I forgot when they first implemented RPM filtering, it's required that the ESC feed that back to the flight controller for the proper filtering. So. The first place to start with this one is the connector between your ESC and your flight controller. A lot of times that's loose, it could be damaged. It's best to just get in there and maybe even fully unplug it, replug it in, make sure it's good and seated, and see if the condition goes away. If it doesn't, it could mean that you need to reflash your ESC. That's always a good option. Make sure you know if you're flashing BL Heli 32, BL Heli S, or Blue J based on what you're doing. Chances are it's going to be 32 or Blue J because BL Heli S doesn't support RPM filtering and you likely won't ever see this flag. So if you find yourself in that position, backtrack a bit because something may be wrong. But Blue J or BL Heli 32 if your connector is not loose. And if both of those things do not check out, it's possible that you have an issue with the ESC itself and it may be time to replace some hardware and do some swapping to see if that works. Not all of these are going to require hardware replacement. Maybe, but some of them will, and this is one of them that could. Check the first two things before you do. The next one we're going to talk about is MSP, and most of the time people see this inside of the status page of Betaflight. They see MSP in there as an arm flag, and they don't understand what that means. They just know that that's a condition on which the flight controller will not arm. Well, MSP is actually the connection your computer uses to talk to your flight controller. MSP is used in a lot of other places as well on flight controllers, things like OSD to digital VTXs, and a bunch of other stuff we're not going to get into because this is a short, concise video. Uh, but this one typically means that you are connected to Betaflight Configurator, and it's got an active connection open for communication. So you want to make sure you disconnect in Betaflight Configurator, unplug your USB, arm your card with a pack, indoors, no props on, outdoors, props on. Don't cut your juicy little fingers off. And without that USB connection, the arm flag should be gone. You should be good to go. I have seen this show up in the goggles sometimes, or not even necessarily in the goggles. I have had to connect my phone to my quad to use Betaflight to see this arming flag happen. Even though I didn't have a currently active session open with Betaflight, the best thing to do there is connect it to Betaflight, connect the quad, disconnect the quad, unplug, and try again. Sometimes it just gets stuck for some reason. I haven't had that happen very often. It's been very few and far between, but it's something you might want to check. More than likely though, like I said, it's because you're actually still plugged into Betaflight for some reason. This next one's actually going to be several, and it is bad RX, RX lost, RX fail safe, and fail safe. They all essentially mean the same kinds of things having to do with your receiver. And by receiver, I mean the thing that your controllery radio with the sticky mabobs connects to to tell your quad what your sticky mabobs are doing. That thing can go into a failsafe mode. Essentially, the receiver sends pulses to the flight controller at intervals. If the flight controller stops detecting those for any reason, as in your radio disconnects from the receiver itself, then it goes into failsafe and does a nosedive. A lot of times you see this in the goggles while you're flying, or sometimes you do see this after you've had a recovery from something like that, where you have crashed due to one of the other failsafes. You typically see something like bad RX after that. The thing to do here is to make sure your receiver is intact. First, check your receiver antenna on the quad. Make sure there's no damage. Make sure the UFL has not popped off. Those things can be very finicky. If you have a receiver with a built-on antenna, like the ELRS ones that have ceramics, check that thing very well for damage. It can actually be cracked at the solder pads, and you may never be able to tell. That can cause fail-safes at really short distances. If you're having them at short distances, you know something is up. If you're having them at long distances, it could be a totally normal condition, 
you're just actually outrunning the signal transmitted from your radio. If that's the case, you want to make sure in your OSD elements you have things like RSSI DBM and LQ, or link quality, because these things in your OSD will let you see if you're having the failsafe due to just normal operating conditions. Maybe there's a lot of trees in the way, maybe you don't have good line of sight, or maybe you're not using enough power at your transmitter, or the antenna on your quad just isn't up to snuff when it comes to receiving the signal. All those things are completely possible. LQ tells you the percentage of packets that you're getting to the receiver that are good. If you have 100%, 100% packets are good. Anything less than that is okay. Express LRS can work down to actually some really low values. I've seen 50% fly just fine. Depends on how sensitive you are to little micro fail safes, because that starts to happen as you get lower. But if you start to see that number roll off, you can use the RSSI DBM to get a real value on how much signal quality your quad is receiving. Just remember the RSSI DBM values have to be tuned. There's a way to tune that. I will link a thing in the description below. If you're using Express LRS, that will show you how to tune your RSSI DBM to make sure the number you're seeing in your goggles is representative of what your actual quad is doing. And as that number increases from say negative 40 to negative 80, you know it's really just not getting the signal and it's either time to check your antenna or maybe crank up the output power or see what else is going on with your receiver system. Because if you're not very far out and you're getting really bad RSSI DBM and really bad LQ numbers, something is up and it's time to dig into that whole thing. Now, if you see RX loss as an army flag, that could mean that the flight controller is not seeing your receiver at all. And if this is a brand new build that you've never actually had working in the field, it's completely possible that the protocol that you have selected in the receivers tab is either incorrect or the port in the ports tab, the UART that your receiver is on, is not set to have serial RX on it appropriately. So you want to check those things. Now, if it's an existing quad that's been flying just fine and you haven't done something like flash it recently, because if you flash it and don't set it back up, you will see this. It's possible that you have a wiring issue and you want to take a look at all the wires connecting your receiver to your flight controller, make sure they're all as they should be. And if it's a new build, you might want to also check that the UARTs, the TX and the RX are in the right spots because that will cause this too. Now, these last three are a little less common, but I want to cover them anyway because they do come up on occasion. The first one we're going to cover that's a little less common is angle. If you see angle come up as an arm flag, doesn't mean you're in angle mode. It means that your quad is sitting in an angle on which it can't arm. Now, in newer versions of Betaflight, it's a little more forgiving, but in older versions, if you bought a bind and fly that's still flash with an older version, there's a setting in the configuration tab that allows you to set the angle on which the quad can arm. And if it's over that angle, it won't arm. It keeps you from doing something like accidentally arming a quad while it's upside down. Say you're holding it in your hand upside down, or you put it on a really unlevel surface and the props are facing 45 degrees. It's kind of a good indication the quad isn't flat. And unless you have made changes to this value in older versions of Betaflight, it won't arm. Now, a lot of us set that to 180 degrees and we just let it fly and it'll arm in any angle. But you want to go into the configuration tab and make sure that that is the case and it's not set to something like 40 or 30 as a safety measure. And the next less common one is Calip. And that's something we don't see very often because usually what happens when we plug a quad in, it calibrates the gyroscope and the accelerometer. So it waits a couple of seconds, enough for you to plug the pack in and then set it down. It generally has an idea of when it's been set down, when it stops moving so much, because it has an accelerometer and gyroscope, it knows when you have set it down and stopped touching it. It will do a small calibration cycle to make sure everything's zeroed before takeoff. Now, if you have a really noisy gyro, which I have had, you will get this calib flag. Typically, it means that there is an electrical problem with your gyro. It could be a lot of noise due to a really bad 3.3 volt rail design that runs the power to the gyro. It could be a mechanically bad gyro as well. So if you get this, there is a way to fix it, but I'm not going to recommend you just run out and do it. You can go into the CLI and you can set this value that nobody ever has to touch to something really high so that it ignores the fact that it's so noisy without actually being running and motors spinning it's a bad sign, you probably shouldn't set this. It can cause some really serious issues. If you have a calib problem and you're setting this value up super high, it's possible you could cause your quad to fly away because so much noise is getting into the gyro that it can't even calibrate itself. I don't recommend you do this. I recommend that you swap the flight controller because that's likely gonna be the issue or you check out the 3.3 volt rail if you're good with the little probes of a voltmeter. 
you can do those kind of things. Depends on the board what you're going to be able to get away with, but if you can do it, try. If not, it may be time to swap your flight controller. And that leads us into the last, least common one that I'm going to talk about, which is no gyro, which can be a hardware problem too. If it says no gyro, that means it does not detect a gyroscope on your flight controller, which could mean the gyroscope is totally dead. It's not getting a signal from it at all. But it also could mean that you have recently flashed beta flight and you don't have your gyro defined in the target anymore. What's happening is a lot of vendors are having to swap out the gyro chips they use because of different stock levels and price increases. They're trying to keep them affordable for us. And every time they do that, they have to get with Betaflight to have the target, the firmware, updated to include drivers for different kinds of gyros. And if a manufacturer tries a gyro they haven't ever put on that kind of board before, and Betaflight hasn't gotten to update it or doesn't even know the manufacturer did it, it's going to not have the driver, which is going to say no gyro. I actually have a video that I link in the description below here that will tell you how to use custom defines to fix that if you think it's a software problem. But if software doesn't fix it, your flight controller has no gyro when you've got to buy a new flight controller because that's the easiest way to troubleshoot this one, unfortunately. And that's it. That's all the bacon bits you get. Not quite enough to make a salad, just enough to give you a little bit of flavor. And maybe you think these were made of soy and not real bacon. That's okay. Leave me a comment below about some other bacon bits videos that you would like to see because I really want to start making these shorter form content videos that pack a lot of knowledge in. Now, I know I can't dig in a whole lot and give you super detailed troubleshooting steps for any of this in this size of video, but if you want to know more, head over to the Bacon Corner Discord because there's a ton of awesome pilots there that are more than willing to help people out. And I mean, I see people ask questions at all hours of the night and people from other parts of the world answer. And it is amazing and I love it. And thank you all so much who are in the Bacon Corner Discord answering those questions. I appreciate it. I'm a pretty busy person lately with the house move and moving all this studio stuff. So being in the Discord has been hard for me, but I will see it and other people will see it too. And we will all gang up and help you. That's what we do. We are a greasy gang up and help other pilots group. It's odd. And if you feel like supporting the channel and making more of this happen, I do have a Patreon. So I'm going to link that in the description below as well. If you feel like supporting the channel at all kinds of different levels, I have a bunch of them, uh, and making more content like this happen, then I really appreciate it. And if not, just give this video a like or a dislike or whatever you want to do. I'm completely happy with whatever choice you've decided to make. Just thank you for being here. And until next time, stay greasy, watch this Patreon outro, and I'll catch you later. So now is the time at which I put my head to this side of the screen while names scroll across this side of the screen, because these are my biggest Patreon supporters. And because I love them all so much anyway, I'm going to put all the Patreon supporters underneath that first group there. And I do have a whole lot of tears, but I really want to start doing this because these people make, they make all of this happen. And I feel kind of like Vanna White, except for I don't know how to spell. So I probably wouldn't do very well on Wheel of Fortune. Plus, I would not look anywhere near as good as she does in a dress. Go on the Discord server and ask me how I know.